Are you pulling your backend every 5 seconds for an update? That's not just inefficient, it's bad user experience. In this video, I'll show you how you can send real-time updates from your .NET backend using SignalR without any page reloads or polling. Here's the application that I'm going to use for this demo. This is the backend application, and I'm also going to show you the client application. We have a couple of endpoints, a post endpoint for creating an order. Our backend for storing the orders is going to be Redis, and we're going to access Redis using the iDistributed cache abstraction. There's also a put endpoint that allows me to update the order status, and then there's a get endpoint to just fetch the order with a given identifier. Now I'm going to start the application, and I'm also going to start the client application. Now this is what the client app looks like. There's just one button to create a random order and assign some customer details and order items. Now what we are interested in is the status timeline where we can track in real time how the status of this order updates as it goes through our system. Right now there is only the initial status when the order was created and the timestamp when this occurred. So this is where we are going to use SignalR. We're going to configure it on our backend, and then whenever the order status updates, we're going to send a notification to the client app, and this is going to add the latest order status on the user interface. Now let's see how we are going to implement this. The first thing we are going to need to start using SignalR is configuring the SignalR services. So I'm going to say builder services add SignalR. If you are running a recent version of .NET like .NET 9 or .NET 8, this method is going to be automatically available. If you are using an older version and you're not seeing this method, you may need to install the SignalR NuGet package. So we completed our first step, which is introducing the SignalR services. Now what do we need to do next? We need to create a hub. This is a central component in the SignalR architecture that allows your client applications to connect with your backend, and it also gives you a centralized location where you can send notifications or messages to your client apps. So I'm going to create a hubs folder, and inside of it, I'm going to create the order notification hub. This will be a public sealed class, and all I have to do is implement the hub base class from SignalR. Now the hub base class already comes with some methods that you can override, such as on connected async and on disconnected async, so you can hook into the lifecycle events for when a client connects or disconnects from your hub. Now you can also define arbitrary methods, which you can call on the server. So let's say I define a method like this, is going to be an async method that I will call send order status update. The argument is going to be an order object, so let me specify that. And then inside of my method, I can access the local methods that are available on the SignalR hub. The three most important properties are the clients and groups, which allow you to respectively access your clients or groups. And then you can also access the hub context, which gives you the connection ID, the current user, and the user's identifier. Now, this is only available if the client is calling your SignalR hub. But if you are doing this call server side, you can expect some of these values used to be null. Now what do we want to do? I want to say await clients and then say all, which means I'm going to send a message to all of my connected clients. If I want to be more specific, there are other methods that allow me to select specific clients, such as the client method, which accepts a connection ID. I can also use users and then specify the user identifier, which allows me to target a specific user. Now for the time being, I'm going to just broadcast a message to all of my clients, and I'm going to use the send async extension method. So what does this allow me to do? I can specify the name of a method, let's say order status updated, and this is essentially a callback that's going to be invoked on my SignalR clients, and I can pass in an arbitrary amount of arguments. Now in this example, I'll be passing in the order instance, and then this is what the client can use to render some additional info on the user interface. So this is all there is to defining a hub. You just implement a base class Class, and then you can implement any number of methods on your backend. Another thing to note is that if you expose this method on your hub, your clients will be able to invoke it, which may or may not be something you want your clients to be able to do. So let's say I comment this out, then how do we actually send some message to our client application? Well, the other way to do it is by going to your endpoint, 
and let's say we go into the put endpoint where we update the order status. And here I'm going to inject another service, which is going to be the iHub context. This is also a built-in abstraction. So I'll need to import the using statement, and then I can specify the hub for which I want to get the hub context. So let's add the hub context. And let's say at the end of this method, after I have successfully updated the order status, I can say hub context and then access the clients for this hub. And just as in the previous example, I can access all of my clients and then say send async. So I want to just copy the arguments that I had here and paste them into the send async call. And then this is going to start streaming my updates in real time, but it's not ideal. We're streaming the updates to all of our clients. So this is something that we're going to fix in a moment, but let's continue with our example. The next thing we have to do is to actually expose our hub to our clients. So we have to say map hub. This is another method that's built in. And you just specify your hub class and you can provide a route where the clients can connect to this hub. Let's say slash order hub. So let's start the backend. And then I'm going to show you what our client implementation looks like. On the client side, I have a simple HTML document with some HTML and JavaScript inside. And I want to highlight this line here where I'm importing the SignalR.js library. This will allow me to connect to my SignalR backend and also be able to receive any messages from my hub. Now, if we scroll down, you'll be able to see the code that's responsible for opening and configuring a SignalR connection. It's available in this function here called setup SignalR connection. So what we have to do is new up a hub connection builder, specify the URL where we can connect to a specific hub, in this case the order hub. I'm also configuring automatic reconnect if for some reason we lose a connection to our backend and then I'm going to execute build and I get back the connection. I can configure any number of callbacks on this connection. Let's say the order status updated callback, which is the message that we are sending from our backend. And the argument is going to be an order instance. So if the order that we received in this message matches the one that we are currently displaying on the UI, then we're going to update the order details. Now you can obviously do more due diligence here and actually find if you have a given order available. Let's say if you are listing more than one order on a screen, then this method is going to be a bit more complicated. So let's say we've configured our callbacks, then we can just start the connection. And this is going to start processing any messages that we receive from our backend. So I'm going to also start the client application. Now I'm going to open up the client application and the network tab in the developer tool side by side. And notice that when I click create, I'm going to get back a new order from my server. And I'm also going to see the order status. Now behind the scenes, I'm going to send a couple of requests to update the order status using Postman. And as I'm sending these requests, you should be able to see the order status is updating on the UI. And if I open up the order hub WebSocket connection right here, you can see the messages flowing. So let me send a couple of more requests. Let's say I update the order status through all of the available statuses. And finally, let's land on delivered. Let's say it was canceled by exception. You can see how these updates are streamed to the user interface. And if you also look at the WebSocket connection here, you can see the messages that we are receiving from the server. Note that the server is also taking care of serializing the contents of the message. So you can see that the argument here is a JSON object representing our order. So this is how SignalR works using WebSockets. In case WebSockets aren't available, it's going to fall back to either server sent events or pulling the backend for any updates. This is all transparent to you, so you don't really have to think about it. And this is why I like SignalR so much. Now let me show you a few more improvements you can make to your SignalR hub. You can define an interface that represents the callback methods that are available on your client. And this is how you can make your clients strongly typed. So you have to implement the generic hub class and specify your client interface. In my case, the iOrder Notification Hub, but actually the more correct name would be iOrder Notification Client. Now, this also changes how you would use your hub context. You can also specify the second argument representing your client. And now this means that the send async method, which we were using previously, is no longer available. And instead, we can call the actual client method, which is strongly typed 
and represented by our interface. So this is a nice improvement to the previous implementation. Now one more thing I want to show you is how to protect your SignalR hubs from unauthorized access. You can do this by decorating the hub with the authorized attribute and you can also specify a single user to which you want to send the notification. So let's say I inject another dependency here for example, the claims principle, which is another built-in type in ASP.NET Core, I can use this type to obtain the user identifier of the current user. Now, how I'm actually going to use this is inside of my post endpoint, where I'm going to assign the user identifier to my order. Now, this currently doesn't exist as a property on the order type. So I'm going to add this property public string, which could be null, and let's say get and set. So now if I go back to my endpoint, I can assign the order user identifier property and extract the name identifier claim from the claims principle. This will allow me in the boot endpoint to select a specific user by specifying the order user ID. And if this user is connected to your SignalR hub, then I will be able to send them this message. And this is much more efficient than broadcasting your messages to all of your connected clients, not to mention how much more secure this is because you are specifically targeting the users that are actually supposed to receive this message. How all of this actually works behind the scenes with SignalR is through an iUserID provider and the default implementation is just going to use the hub connection context to access the current user and find the name identifier claim. This also means that if the same user has multiple SignalR connections, you'll be able to send the message to all of those connections using the user's identifier. And I think this is an awesome feature from SignalR that very few people actually know about. I've even seen some folks re-implement all of this functionality themselves because they didn't know that it was built in. Now to actually demonstrate that this works, I'm going to install an additional NuGet package. I'll look for JWT Bearer and install the latest version of Microsoft ASP.NET Core Authentication JWT Bearer. Now I also need to add a couple of more services. So I will say Builder Services Add Authorization and Builder Services Add Authentication, specifying the Bearer scheme. And then I'm going to say Add JWT Bearer. Now I'm also going to include some middleware. So I'll say App Use Authorization. And then let's decorate our post endpoint with require authorization. So we're going to need to specify a valid JSON web token to be able to create an order. So I'm going to start the application and then what do we actually do about the JSON web token? Well, there's actually a pretty cool command line utility called user JWTs. And if you navigate to the folder where your project is located, you can list out any JSON web tokens that you've already created. If you don't have one, you can say .NET user JWTs and then create and you can optionally specify any arguments. And in my case, I'm going to print out the JSON web token that I created earlier. And what we are interested in is the actual token value. Now, this is a fully qualified JSON web token, which you can use for testing purposes. Now, let me go to my client application code, and I'm going to modify it by creating a variable that's going to represent my access token. And I'm going to just paste in the raw value of the access token. So in the with URL method, when I'm configuring my SignalR connection, I can specify an object with some additional arguments, and I'm going to pass in the access token factory, where I'm just going to return my raw access token. Now, typically you're going to fetch this value from let's say local storage or a cookie and pass it to your backend. But to make this example simple, I'm just going to hard code this. Now I'm also going to pass it in our post request inside of the authorization header. And I'm going to specify this as bearer. And then I'm going to specify the access token value. So if I go ahead and navigate to my client application, I should be able to click the create new order button button and this lands on the breakpoint inside of our minimal API endpoint and you can see that the orders user ID has a value assigned which means that we're able to pull this value from the JSON web token so I'm going to press continue and you can see I'm getting an order back so I'm going to copy the order ID and I'm going to send a request to update the order status this is going to hit the breakpoint inside of my put endpoint and we're going to fetch the order from Redis, update the order status, and finally, we're going to use the user ID value 
on this order to send a notification that the order status was updated. So I'm going to press continue. And if I navigate back to the client, you can see how the order status is updated. And if I go ahead and send a couple of more requests behind the scenes, all of them are going to be sent in real time to my client application, where I am able to specify the concrete user that should receive this message using the user's identifier. So this is how you can start building real-time applications using SignalR. If you want to see a more complex example, check out this video next, where I'm using SignalR to build a stock price monitoring dashboard. Take a look at my courses if you want to improve your software architecture skills. And until next time, stay awesome.